Ever since solo leveling became popular a couple of years back, I have been very excited to one day experience the story. I mean, the way people were gassing it up, you'd think this was guaranteed to be one of the best stories I've ever seen, right? Although I wasn't quite ready to experience it just yet, as I would rather wait for the anime to come out, and the anime just finished airing the other day, so what did I think about it? Did it live up to expectations? Uh, well... Nah, not, not quite. The first worry I saw people having online about this show was the animation and that it wasn't looking good enough. And to those people, I just have to say like, bro, what is wrong with you? I think Jujutsu Kaisen might have spoiled some people and I really hope this isn't the new standard that people have come to expect because we not get this too often. I would say that this is a pretty faithful adaptation to the manga, but weirdly enough, the first part of the episode starts with an anime only scene. <laughs> Hell no. Now, I can understand why they put this scene in here. It explains how the gates started opening and how the hunters have to defeat the monsters. It also shows what the hunters are capable of compared to other humans. So while I can definitely understand why they added this scene, I think it was completely unnecessary and kind of takes away from the story. These are all things we see later on in the exact same episode. This really just makes the episode worse. It would have been one thing if the world world has some kind of like really complex and intricate lord that would be hard to show us without telling us, but this is literally the most basic generic premise I've ever seen. Monsters attack humans and the humans have to go into dungeons and use magic to defeat them. Imagine if the beginning of One Piece wasn't Luffy getting the gum gum fruit, getting Shanks' hat and eventually setting out to sea, but instead a bunch of like random pirates with devil fruits fighting each other and the navy. That would be a terrible way to start the story because you already get to see those things while following Luffy. And One Piece is not nearly as generic as solo leveling, so I really do think this opening filler scene makes it seem like the anime is taking itself a little too serious. And not that there's anything wrong about unoriginal stories, like you can have the most cliche idea ever, but as long as you execute it well, it will be an enjoyable experience. But anyway, who cares about that? Let's get to the actual story. Because apart from the beginning, I actually really like these two first episodes. It establishes our main character well, and we get to see the world through his lens. Also, the extra part of the dungeon feels really creepy, and I love how gimmicky it is, giving them a chance to escape by keeping calm and figuring out the challenges. It's genuinely exciting, with some real stakes. I think this is a pretty solid introduction to Jin's character, however, this isn't really Jin. I mean it is, but like, who he turns into only a few episodes later feels like a completely different character. So really, however they introduced his character in these two first episodes didn't really matter. And I don't really think his transformation from this absolute beta male to edgy Sigma Overlord worked very well or was really convincing at all. Like I couldn't actually tell you why this happened to him. Typically in stories when a character undergoes a change in personality, such as this, there will be a key moment that you can look back to and see why this change happened. It's clear to me that this moment was supposed to be when he dies and Kim leaves him. This is supposed to be the catalyst to his descent into edginess. But again, I couldn't really tell you why. He didn't even know Kim. Like, yeah, of course he'll leave your ass. He's got a family. Was the trauma of death really so gruesome? If it was, I think he would have just stopped being a hunter, just like Juhi did. A character who actually had to face the trauma of of the double dungeon. But honestly, I don't really want to harp on this for too long because it's clear that we're not really supposed to see the beta version of Jin for too long and that the author just wanted to get straight to this new version of him. So, okay, fine. I kept watching, expecting to fall in love with Jin and all of his edginess. But at a certain point of watching, I really started struggling to care. And I realized there were several reasons for this. But the main reason why became apparent in episode seven, because this entire time in the back of my mind, I was just kind of wondering why Jin was doing any of this. And of course, it's to save his mother. That's his main motivation. That's what's been explained since the beginning. But after watching episode 7, I realized that this is a terrible motivation for him to have. And the reason for that is because 
we do not have any idea who his mom is. She has no lines of dialogue, no flashback scenes that help me care about her even in the slightest. So why should I care about Jin wanting to save her? To explain what I mean, I thought of the closest example I could think of, and that is Gon's motivation from Hunter x Hunter. His motivation is to find his dad. Pretty similar, right? Save your mom, find your dad. And you know what? Gon's dad doesn't even have any dialogue or scenes either. But man, is this motivation so much better than Jin's. What makes Jing so interesting is that we don't know who he is. He is shrouded in mystery and so many of the characters in the world of Hunter x Hunter knows who Jing is and makes remarks about him, giving us more information of what sort of person he might be. Meanwhile, not a single soul has ever mentioned Jin's mom. For all I know, him and his sister are the only two people in the world that knows of her existence. Normally in stories where our main character is trying to save a different character in some way, it's usually a character that the main character cares about and has the connection with. This, of course, solo leveling has. Jin cares about his mom and wants to save her. But what is, I'd say, even more important, at least for me, is that it is a character that we, the audience, also care for. I want to save Sasuke because I like Sasuke, and he is a character that has been built up since the beginning of the story. I want to save Rukia because I like Rukia. I want to save Robin because I like Robin. I do not want to save Jin's mom because I do not care about her at all. And to make this issue about twice as bad, well, it doesn't even seem like Jin wants to save his mom. Huh? In episode 7, Jin Hu, Who? oh man, I hope I'm saying these names right. Jin Hu asks Jin to join his guild, where he will be able to earn 30 billion of whatever currency is used in this universe. Which, if we were assuming that this is the Chinese currency, this translates to 4.2 billion dollars. In other words, this is a lot of money. This is enough money for like a uh, hundred lifetimes. And what does Jin do? He says no thanks. What? Why? Is he dumb? How is 30 billion not good enough for him? He even says himself that 30 billion is chump change. So what does he need all this money for? How much money does your mom's medical bill cost? It was explained to us before that the only reason he became a hunter was to pay for his mom's medical expenses to stay alive. So if you were able to pay for them as an E-rank hunter, or actually the weakest hunter in the entire world, how on earth is 30 billion not enough? And this is why I started to question if he even wanted to save his mom, because, well, what else do you need all this money for? This is such an unbelievably dumb scene that it's just frustrating. And the worst part is, it gets worse because later in this episode Jin actually finds a way to save his mom for good by using the elixir of life and it's clear that this is Jin's top priority. So I ask again what exactly does he need the money for? What was the point in this scene? Why did it need to take so long? Why does he turn into the fucking wolf of Wall Street in a later episode when he sells some dungeons to this guy? Make it make sense please. <sighs> At this point, I have started to realize that it's not supposed to make sense. There has been no care or thought to do anything properly except for one singular thing. And that thing being to make Jin as edgy as humanly possible. Now, to be clear, I don't say edgy as a criticism. I don't think calling something bad because it's edgy is really valid criticism, and I try not to use it in a negative way. Because I have no issues with edgy characters. In fact, I love a lot of them. Like I said, I love Sasuke. He's one of my favorite characters. But it is so painstakingly clear that this was the only or at least by far the most important thing for the author to accomplish when making solo leveling. And to me, that's not enough, man. Okay, I need to take a break from complaining, so time to talk about what's probably the best episode of the season, episode nine. So far in the season, I didn't really think the action had been anything to write home about. The animation had been really good, and the people who say otherwise are on crack, but the actual action itself had been just fine. This is really the only instance where I can say I like really thoroughly enjoyed it and part of that I think has to do with the fact that all of our heroes are on the back foot. Kang is a pretty solid antagonist while he's there and what I think I enjoyed most was the one-armed guy fighting him. Honestly he's probably my favorite character from the entire season which is really sad especially because I don't even remember his name but hey I really thought he felt like a real person who had realistic struggles he was going through. Now we all know Jin is going to end up being the one to fight him in the end but they still 
still manage to make it suspenseful. And the way they do this is by creating instances where it might actually look like the one-armed guy could win. Having Juhi giving him a buff was a great way to do this and also a great use of the mechanics the show had built up to this point. Whether or not I truly believe that the one-armed guy could win doesn't really matter. What matters is that the show made me think that there might actually be a possibility that he could. Other anime and manga actually do this a lot, particularly in Dragon Ball. In both the Saiyan and Frieza saga, we have Piccolo, Gohan, and Krillin fighting Frieza or Nappa. And at times, it looks like they might actually have a shot at winning before Goku even shows up. But of course, this doesn't happen, and Goku ends up having to save the day. So yeah, I honestly really enjoyed this episode, and don't really have any complaints. Except for the fact that Kang, like, sucked at what he was supposed to do, and got caught in the act, like, two times. Like, how the fuck had this dude been getting away with these shenanigans for so long in the first place? So yeah, honestly, my favorite episode. So now let's talk about my least favorite episode. Episode 11. This episode is dumb and bad and I don't like it. Jin gets offered a job change quest, whatever the hell that is. But you know, let's accept it. We then proceed to fight some enemies and this is fine enough, but once we get to the boss fight, it takes a massive step down. This fight is not good. It's just action for the sake of action. No clever use of mechanics, no strategy, just two people fighting each other. Jin quickly finds out that this enemy is super strong and that he is no match for it. The different skills he has in his arsenal doesn't even face this enemy and he ends up taking a beating. It looks like Jin has finally met his match as he is sat down on the throne looking like it's all over. The enemy picks up his sword and swings it at him with full power. And what does Jin do? He catches the sword with his hand because of course he does. And then he just kills this enemy that was way stronger than him because of course he does. I will say that him essentially like respawning his knife was actually a clever use of mechanics, but that's about the only compliment I can give this sorry ass excuse of a fight. Except for of course the animation as always. Also, this episode just continues to shove these other characters and exposition down my throat. I haven't mentioned it before now, but the amount of time the show just randomly cuts to these characters that I have no idea who are, talk about things I have no idea about is absurd. Like, I cannot tell you a single thing about any of these people. The amount of times they've shown me this girl and I still cannot tell you anything about her is ridiculous. Who is this guy? What's his personality like? Who is this? Why should I care about him? Who are any of these people? You know, I have no issues with shows that are primarily action and fighting, but like, the action at least has to be good and the characters at least need to be likable. Just because it's an action show doesn't mean it has to be poorly written. Jujutsu Kaisen has way more action than solo leveling does. And I think that is a really good story with really great characters and most importantly, really good fights in action. I mean, the animation is even way better, not even comparable. If I wanted an action show, I would just rewatch that, or Bleach, or Demon Slayer. I get that the appeal for this show is the edgy main character coupled with the video game mechanics, but even then, there is like hundreds of anime that have exactly that. So at the end of the day, I'm just left confused. Why do people like the story so much? What is the appeal? Like, I actually really wish that I had the answer to this, so if you know please let me know down in the comments and again if you want like an actual good action show then make sure to check out this video right here